So I have a Creamware Pulsar 2 and it is around about 20 years old and over the last year it has become increasingly unstable um, with error messages like those you're seeing here and uh, I normally have it connected to an SPDIF output and I'm finding it very difficult to get it to give a coherent SPDIF output or to receive any ADAT input from my um, IO. Uh, and when it fails, you can sometimes get it to work by switching sample rates, but other times you hear this awful blasting digital sound. And after replacing uh, my SPDIF leads with the higher quality ones and uh, worrying about this for a long time, I eventually decided to try and replace the capacitors or recap the whole sound card. I pulled the sound card out of my machine and first thing that was noticed was there was actually a missing capacitor. You can see here the two pads that it was on and you can see the telltale little marks on the solder pads there where the legs of the capacitor used to be. Now at some point I must have knocked that off. I don't know when. It's amazing that it worked at all without it but there we go. Um, and while I was looking at it you could also see some other problems such as hairline cracks in some of the solder pads or just a lot of this brown leaked electrolyte all over the board, which was an indication that the capacitors had failed. Uh, so I went online and found some alternative components that would be suitable to replace those on the board. Uh, you can see those described here for the main board and also for the IO daughter board that's connected to it. I have the ADAT one. I initially thought that my I.O. board might have been missing some capacitors as well, but I checked mine against some reference images I was able to find online and those gaps were supposed to be there, so um, that was okay. Uh, slightly different components on the daughter board to the main board. This is some close-up shots of those, and these are the alternatives I was able to find on eBay to replace them with. Once the components arrived, you can see here they come in these nice spools. Um, they're surface mount capacitors uh, and they are the same size and specification as the ones that need to be replaced. Here's the equipment I used. So we've got some electrical solvent cleaner, cotton buds, liquid flux, liquid solder, some solder braid, a heat gun, uh, magnifying glass, uh, soldering iron, uh, those are the capacitors. Uh, the first thing I did was clean up the pad that was there from the capacitor that had been knocked off, added a little bit of liquid flux to the pads. Used a bit of uh, copper braid and soldering iron, look at my shaky hand. I'm very nervous doing this first one and just drew off the um, spare solder with a cotton wool bud with some electrical solvent on it and just cleaned away the flux to reveal a nice clean pad ready for putting the fresh component on. Same thing on the second pad, not the solder, use the copper braid to draw up the um, old solder electrical solvent on the cotton wool bud, clean away the flux. Uh, and then I tinned both of the pads with just a small amount of solder. And then using some tweezers, carefully placed the capacitor where it needed to be, paying particular attention to the polarity, making sure it's the same as the one that was on there originally. And once it was held in place, then just the lightest touch with the soldering iron is enough just to melt that pad and hold it in position. You've done one leg doesn't move around anymore so the second one is much easier. For the other caps on the board 
I found the best way to remove the old ones, although it feels horrible to do the first time you do it, is actually just to twist them off using either some tweezers or some needle nose pliers. Um, I recapped, I, I guess I took off about 30 or 40 capacitors using this method and it worked perfectly every time. I was worried that it was going to bring pads off the board or something, but it didn't, it was fine. Um, one thing you have to be careful of is when you do that, uh, it does leave behind the metal legs from the capacitor. And if you don't tidy those up, if you don't collect those, they might end up loose on the board somewhere. They could potentially cause a short and kill your board. You can see the leg there. You can see it at sort of 45 degrees. That's what we need to remove. But to get those off, I used a little bit of solder just to give me some fluid to work with here. Um, and then... And then uh, I think what you see next is some copper braid and soldering iron to melt that added solder and basically wash away um, the leg. You'll see it come away now, I hope. Here we can see another one that I did elsewhere on the board. Uh, cleaning off any leaked electrolyte using a cotton wool bud and some electrical cleaning solvent. I added a small amount of flux to the legs of the capacitor just to make it a little bit easier to um, solder them onto the board because this is quite small scale stuff. Placing the component in position, you can see I've already tinned this one, I must have forgotten to record that part. But that one has been tinned, you can tell by the domed um, solder pads there. And then just the lightest touch with the soldering iron goes into position. So you've got to be very careful with all of the other components that are nearby. Once it's soldered down, I would just give the capacitor a, a little wiggle and make sure that I'm not seeing any movement in the solder pad to give me the confidence that it's properly soldered in position there. And then flush it all with more electrical solvent cleaner and clean it away with the cotton bud. Let's get rid of all of that surplus flux. Now, once I'd replaced all of the components on the main Pulsar 2 board, uh, I reassembled my machine and found that that had solved the crackling and distortion sounds and the inability to sync to any SPDIF input or output. Um, however, I also found that MIDI input was not working and I'm not sure when that happened. Uh, I think that my theory here is that the capacitors on the um, MIDI input component of the I.O. board aged at the same rate as everything else and in the same way that the SPDIF stuff failed, the MIDI input failed. Anyway, um, I then took the daughter board, the I.O. board out and replaced the capacitors on that as a separate piece of work. And in doing so, I was able to restore the MIDI input functionality and the card is now 100% working again. The only difference on the daughter board is that one of the capacitors is a traditional capacitor rather than a surface mount one. So the technique was a little bit different in replacing it. Um, but apart from that, fairly straightforward. Once more then, just from another angle. So this is me twisting off an old capacitor from the IO board. Adding a little solder to the pads just to help me draw off the legs from the capacitor. There you can see the leg left behind from the capacitor. Add a bit of flux to help the solder flow. and use some copper braid to draw off the solder and the little legs.
clean off any residue. You can see how brown the Q-tip is there. A bit of electronic cleaning solvent. And there is the prepared pad ready for the new capacitor. Retin the cleaned pads. Plop the new capacitor down in position, remembering to check the polarity is the same as before. and solder it in place. And a little wiggle to make sure that it's well bonded. Finally then, here is a flypast showing all of the replaced components on the daughterboard. board.